affect if, if natural? Oh, the, the one that looks like if natural is in fact if natural. Yeah. Okay. Did you catch that? That's me um, knowing about music a little bit. Welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda, and today we have Scott Mason, or, or is it Scott J. Mason? Yeah, Scott J. Mason Scott is, my, I guess, my um, musician brand. Well, I appreciate you didn't storm off the set because I've got your <laughs> That's name. That's all right. <laughs> Scott Mason's fine as well. That yeah. is my name. Yeah. So you have a new EP out. It's called Animal Guilt. Yes. Um, it's been out for what, a week or so? or? Uh, yeah, it came out on the 31st of yeah, October. On Halloween. Yeah. Very That's nice. right. Nice, it's scary. All righty, and uh, it's an EP, seven tracks. Mm -hmm. Give us a little background on just, you know, what got you to the point where you're releasing this. Okay, um, well, I've, I've been kind of recording in my own, my little room, my own home studio for a few years, dabbling. Um, I have actually had a couple of other releases online, but they were really just me just throwing up what I had and just because you could right. these days and you can but um, yeah this this time around I found myself in the same position where I had uh, just a bunch of songs sitting there that I'd recorded because I just keep recording but without any forethought you know what I'm going to do in the future with it so I just had this bunch of songs and went okay I really got to uh, I really got to do something with this because they're sitting there they're driving me crazy and I need to put them in some kind of cohesive collection and put them out. Yeah. Um, and unlike the last releases I've done, which are just, like I was saying, just, here's some songs. They're mm. on Bandcamp. Hooray. Right. This was, uh, with this time, I thought, okay, I better do it properly. Um, because anyone can, these days, record their home studio, uh, make a song, put it online, and say it's there. But uh, the hard part is, is getting it known, getting it out there. So I employed Aeroplane uh, music to help me promote it and yeah so they did a, a month long lead up uh, during October and yeah had an official release date where and that's a big difference than just throwing it out there on the it net totally hoping, is. it's kind of like just hoping something's gonna catch on yeah especially when you're like self-managing right and um, <laughs> you're a hopeless useless independent New, Ze New Zealand musician I'm not saying they all I'm saying I am. Um, <laughs> So you, managing yourself is just a, a nightmarish because I don't think you probably should anyway, or well, I shouldn't because the, what you go through and hear about your music is something that a, a manager or a promoter shouldn't. Well, some people seem to be perfect for it. You know, they yeah. in fact they're they seem to be like uh, Amanda Pal Palmer. Uh, you know, she she seems to really love yeah. getting into the nuts and bolts of promoting herself and yeah. You know, she is doing it 24 hours a day. I know. Whereas it looks exhausting to me. Oh uh, well, I mean, I've seen people who do that and I admire them greatly, and wonder how they do it. Um, I think they have to be of a certain strength of mind. Yeah. For starters, <laughs> um, but also, like you say, it is pretty much a full-time job, yeah. and if you've got, you know, no income coming in or, or whatever, then you, you're kind of screwed. So, so yeah, I mean, for my part, that, that's a couple of the, the the problems I have. I mean, one thing's the kind of my mental issues about my music, which is <laughs> one day I'm like, yeah, this is all right, this is pretty good. I should totally put this out. The next day, it's like this should be burned <laughs> at the stake. No one should ever hear this. I should just go into the mountains and never be seen by humanity again. So. <laughs> well, okay, so let's talk about the music. You're going to perform three songs for us today. Yep. And you've got, first of all, you have several musicians uh, on hand to help you out. So yes. Who, who's with you? Um, I have a, a string trio of um, Dave Kahn on violin, um, his sister Jenny Kahn on cello, and a good friend of mine, Brendan Turner, on the double bass. And also my life partner, um, <laughs> Kirsty, on some BVs. Very good. And the first song you're going to do is... The second track on the EP, it's called Be On Your Guard. Yes. Give us a little background on where that came, came from. Um, well, it originated like all songs, just kind of fiddling around on the guitar and words and melodies coming to you. Um, when I fleshed it out, it kind of became, it was really around the time of the whole GCSB um, outrage, well, lack of, and uh, I was kind of inspired somewhat by, by that. Um, and in fact, it was actually on um, the Cheese on Toast compilation about the right. GCSB bill. Um, but in, in, a, in a larger sense as well, it was kind of about um, life and people. It's kind of about all that kind of Big Brother stuff, but also um, 
people around you kind of I, there's, there's points in my life where I've you know especially in New Zealand when you got that kind of tall poppy syndrome or, mm -hmm. or, or a syndrome where um, you know it's really it's really hard for New Zealanders to kind of believe in themselves and be and push themselves to be successful whatever that means um, so it's kind of in a sense it's about those those couple of things all right well let's give it a listen this is be on your guard So that was Be On Your Guard. What do you got up for us next? Uh, the next track we're going to do is called No Running, which is the um, which is this track straight after Be On Your Guard on the EP. It's just like listening to it uh, and watching it at the same time. Yeah, I kind of I quite like actually doing things in, in the order that you've put them out. It kind of because you spend a lot of time getting that order right, and it kind of is it's quite a good set list mm -hmm. in that sense. I mean, not always. You don't want to be. Nothing worse than going to see a, a band and it sounds exactly like the album. Yes. All exactly. That's why I always kind of, 
I'm not that excited about hearing a band play an album all the way through in yeah, its yeah. entirety. I mean, yeah. even if it, no matter how great the album is, it's just that you, you lose that sense of excitement of, oh, yeah, I wonder totally. what the next song is going to be, because totally. you kind of know what the next song is going to so, be. Yeah, so we just disagreed completely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agreed. I well, disagree if you don't with know myself. that it's coming, then yeah. it's great. But yeah, yeah if, if you're advertising, I'm playing my EP from beginning to end. Yeah. It's like, okay, I can play that at home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At home. So what can you tell me about the song itself, No Running? Um, well, that one's kind of really about... Uh, that whole st stepping up and, and, and doing this solo thing. Because um, I've, been, I've been a drummer for years and I've been um, in heaps of different bands for like 25 years doing stuff. So and there's been a lot of those drummers stepping out from behind the uh, kit. Yeah, well I mean I was a drummer and a singer and I, I've, I've, I've fronted for bands back in my young day when I had a shaved head and like <laughs> um, cut off army shorts back in the 90s doing right. prog rock bands. <laughs> and um, yeah, and drumming for lots of bands and uh, I've always been dabbling with music and especially composition and, and keyboards and stuff like that. But uh, it got to a point where A, I was pretty burnt out on bands and, and B, I was also burnt out on recording all this big grandiose music at home and not playing it live. So I got to the point where I need to just pick up a guitar and just start learning from, the, from scratch mm -hmm. so I can at least get up and just play it live, you know, and it can be a simple process of writing a song, recording it, and playing it live. Um, so when I started doing that, which was probably only about three, four years ago, um, I had been playing for a long time, but I'd never felt nerves for since I was 14 years old when I first got up and played. And the first time I did it at an open mic, I, I didn't know what these feelings were. Right. <laughs> you know, I'd played in so many bands for so many years and the concept of nerves was gone. But getting up by myself, for the first time in my life and playing my own music was terrifying. And so I spent a few years just doing kind of open mic stuff, trying to get my confidence. And um, yeah, that's kind of really about that. It's, ah, it's about okay. kind of just, you know. All right, you well, hopefully going. you're not scared playing here because you're among friends. Yeah, no, I should be fine now. <laughs> yeah. I, have, I have other musicians with me, so that's always You can good. hide behind them. Yeah. Excellent, okay, well, let's we'll listen to No Running.
Okay, that was No Running, and we have one more song from you. Before we get to the actual song, um, you do have one show that you're going to be appearing at in a couple of weeks. Why don't you tell me about that? Yeah, there's a, um, a special show on the 23rd of this month um, at the Wine Cellar, and it's a, it's a tribute to Sam Preble, um, who is was a wonderful musician and, and guy that we all knew. Friends with pretty much every every musician in the country, um, and he died last week. Um, and yeah, we he was he touched everyone so much musically that there was always going to be a tribute gig. So there there is one um, yeah on that date. I think it might be a wine cellar and Whammy. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, a, it's a double. On November twenty third. Twenty third. Yeah. yeah. I'll only be playing one or two songs because it's really packed with um, people who want to. You yep. know, sing a song for Sam. Um, but uh, after that, um, there's definite plans for a, uh, a tour in early next year, a New Zealand tour. Mm. And do you tour usually with the strings and the bass? And well, no, that's, that's, a, that's a relatively new thing um, because Dave did record the strings on the, on the EP and naturally I wanted to um, get him involved in the live stuff, but then we kind of thought we might as well... Um, Make a you know get a get a couple more and make it a whole string yeah. section. It so I, pretty I, cool. Well, I it's say. it's <laughs> sounds pretty good. Yeah. Um, and so I had to I rescored everything for all the all the songs that didn't have strings on there and, and right. wrote string parts for all of them so we can do the whole lot. Um, but no, I think with the tour, the concept I imagine would be in the smaller um, venues, smaller towns, and just be a solo thing. Mm -hmm. And then we try and organise something bigger for the main centres. Cool. So what is the final song that we're going to hear from you today? Um, it's, a, it's a track called Good Man, um, and it's a fairly intimately personal kind of one about growing up in Blenheim and my family and um, the death of my father and things like that. All righty. Well, we'll go out with it. Thanks for coming by. No and worries. bringing all these amazing musicians with us. It sounds fantastic in here. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for having so us. Hopefully everybody enjoy it. Yes. Okay, we'll go off with Good Man.
from the distance but that 